giving you a short introduction about Synergetics also. So, a uh, Synergetics is an innovative company that offers customized learning solution to meet the diverse need of a client. So, prime strength is reskilling and onboarding solution based on today's cutting edge technologies. So, some of our key strengths are persona based onboarding, reskilling solution, certification solution, emerging technology training, cloud adoption, practice development. So our, this is a small code of conduct which you all need to follow. So please note that you can't take the screenshot of the presentation and can't do the screen recording. So if you need the recording, then simply subscribe our YouTube channel. So we'll be sharing the YouTube channel link in the chat box later. So our today's session is all about masterclass on right certification for your resources. Search ahead with productivity levels. Our today's session agenda is to know why certification is important for individual perspective, how it is increases your visibility, how it is differentiate you from your peers, how it validates your knowledge and skills, what are the tracks available, who should attend, who should attend what and what, what is the ROI out of it. So our today's speaker for the webinar is Ms. Ashwini Shahane. Uh, Ms. Ashwini uh, is a Microsoft certified trainer and she's, she's the president of learning services at Synergetics IT Services. She is working for more than 20 years with Synergetics family. She always believes in keeping herself up to date and relevant with new skills by achieving the relevant certifications. She had also worked closely with Microsoft in delivering trainings and consultancy and skilling Microsoft partners and customers workforces on the new emerging technology areas, pan India and internationally. She is proficient and has certified on the latest technologies like Microsoft Azure, cloud, data analytics and artificial intelligence, machine learning and Python. We believe that she, she is the right person today to guide us about the need to certify and choosing the correct certification journey of the various certification paths Microsoft provides. Uh, last but not the least, your feedback is very important to us and uh, we'll be sharing the feedback form at in the chat box later. So you just need to just feel it. OK, uh, now I would like to hand over the mic uh, to Ashwini ma'am. Thank you everyone for your attention. Once again, uh, ma'am, you can proceed. Thank you, Rupesh. Um, I hope I'm audible to everybody. Yes, madam. Yes, you are audible. <laughs> So thank, thank you, Rupesh, for the great introduction and welcome to everybody to this uh, session on uh, the certification journeys and how you should choose the right certification. So as Rupesh has said, uh, my name is Ashwini and I'll be guiding you through this entire journey. Any questions you have, please feel free to ask me the questions. You could either um, uh, put it up on the chat window. I will try and check the chat uh, periodically. If not, uh, you could, uh, you know, at the end we have a Q&A section, so you could always um, uh, ask your questions then. So Rupesh has already uh, taken you through the agenda, right? So we are going to start off with having a look at what um, is the importance of certifications. Some data points of the industry today especially related to IT skilling, um, impact on individuals as well as um, how certification uh, today is being viewed by organize, organizations and specifically IT decision makers and what value does it bring in um, with some data points uh, of course and then uh, you know how the uh, learning process itself has undergone a change today and then lastly we will look at um, the main section of our presentation, which is going to be looking at what are the Microsoft um, uh, certifications that are available to us for the Azure Cloud. Right, so we're going to go through the different uh, certification paths for Azure, 
Similarly, Microsoft also has certification paths in uh, business apps as well as in um, uh, productivity. Uh, we are not looking at those two sections today. We are looking mainly at the Azure certification paths. But if you are interested in um, either um, or, you know um, modern workplaces or if you are interested in uh, the business app certifications, please uh, you can always connect back to us. So let's start with some data points, especially related to IT skilling, right? Um, it is no um, surprise, I'm sure, to everybody that today what is troubling decision makers, IT decision makers majorly is the skill gap, right? And this skill gap, and we will later on in the presentation have a look at why the skill gap is there. Um, but this skill gap that is there is actually leading to low productivity, high expenses for the organization. So definitely there is a skill gap. So there's definitely a need for people to acquire new skills and to validate those skills with certifications. Uh, there are a lot of higher paying opportunities that exist in the market today because of the uh, technology evolution that has happened, because of the technology churn that has happened, uh, definitely because of the skill gap that has got created, um, there is a lot of demand for skills and there is very little um, supply. So definitely um, people who have those skills are in high demand and can actually demand higher uh, salaries or pay packets. Right? Um, in 2020, and this is based on a research survey that was done in 2020, uh, by uh, Global Knowledge. So in 2020, um, in fact, more professionals certified, right? And that's actually surprising because of the pandemic, we would have expected, uh, you know, not so many certifications to happen. But uh, surprisingly, people have taken to uh, the virtual world and uh, taken to online certifications uh, really well. And there are a lot of certifications that have happened this year. Uh, the top paying or in demand technology areas today are yet, of course, the cloud and uh, without doubt uh, cybersecurity because of that. Right. So these are the two skill areas that are in high demand, right? Where uh, there is a gap and you know lots of opportunities that are there. Um, our IT organizations are, you know, open to doing more training today so there is more support for training and learning within an organization than maybe previously that was there so today a manager is more open to letting his team members you know go and uh, attend a session or uh, build new skills or certify themselves on new skills and job satisfaction is becoming very important to professionals right and uh, as per the survey uh, Microsoft technologies are in high demand, so Microsoft certifications are also in high demand uh, uh, as per the survey done last year. So what is the impact of certifications? Keeping in mind um, these uh, um, findings or these data points that we have, what is the impact of certifications and we look at um, the impact of certifications on individuals on professionals first and then of course we will address it from an IT uh, decision maker or an IT managers perspective also or an organization's perspective also. So just a few um, uh, data points which uh, basically bring out the benefits of being certified. So 67% of people feel that uh, their confidence in their abilities, self abilities increases if they are certified, right? With certification, 41% uh, get an increased job satisfaction because they are able to do their role, uh, their job much better, uh, are more skilled, uh, have more knowledge um, that is there. 55% um, uh, feel that knowledge um, uh, can be applied today now to real work situations once they've gone through certification. Of course, 35% um, also said it brings in increase in salary. So 35% uh, 
um, uh, there is an increase in salary as a benefit of certification. Um, 45% of course, higher quality of work output, right? That is the, the kind of uh, deliverables that um, uh, come out of the um, talent that is there, which is certified, is much better than um, a non-certified talent or resource. And of course, if you have uh, some kind of certification which validates your knowledge, then uh, you also have increased um, responsibilities uh, or um, you know that has been put on you from the organization point of view. So you have a much uh, larger role to play um, uh, in terms of, of course, not only uh, more uh, uh, projects maybe, but also um, a more leading role within the project. And of course, um, it is benefits uh, look good on paper, but unless they actually translate into some tangible benefits, uh, you know, we really are not motivated to, uh, you know, apply it. So some tangible benefits. So you can see that there is 34% um, uh, people where it's salary or uh, their uh, remuneration has increased, their pay packets have increased, um, increased responsibilities, there have been promotions, right? Uh, um, performance reviews, um, they get rated higher because they are certified. A lot of people um, are getting better jobs, new jobs, new opportunities because of certifications, right? Um, are entering into uh, maybe technology, newer technology spaces because like I said, the technology churn itself has brought in a lot of new opportunities. And um, if you're getting into something new, what is the best way of kind of proving your capabilities or your abilities is by showing that you are certified, you are validating your skills. Okay? So a lot of tangible benefits that um, rise out of certifications. Uh, concept which is you know gaining a lot of uh, um, momentum I would say is the concept of cross certification right now what do you mean by cross certification of course um, cross certification is having multiple certifications but not necessarily in the same technology area you may actually have certification in diverse uh, technology areas right and that in fact increases your um, uh, increases your technology base right and uh, the kind of solutions you can provide is definitely going to be better right so for example a few um, um, uh, samples of cross certifications which are you know becoming really really popular is for example, uh, skilling yourself on cloud, plus um, ensuring you have some kind of a security certification, because security is a very important aspect of the cloud today, right? So any solution on the cloud is incomplete if you don't have the right security implementation for it. So whether it's a um, you know solution which is uh, infrastructure based solution or whether it is a modern application solution or whether it's an analytics or AI solution, cyber security plays an important role, especially with the cloud coming in things like compliance, um, uh, things like um, uh, regulatory um, uh, implications. All this is becoming very important. So cyber security is uh, with cloud is one popular kind of cross certification examples, right? A lot of developers today, um, you know, add value to their knowledge or their skills if they also get certified on some DevOps um, technology space. Because today um, developers are expected to also um, be DevOps people, right? So DevOps is something that goes hand in hand with developers. So it's good as a developer to build, you know, a uh, additional skills by in DevOps 
uh, area. So these are some um, examples of cross certifications and there are a lot of people today which who are um, kind of having a main uh, uh, expertise area, but are having a lot of um, you know um, additional um, knowledge um, areas which kind of enhance their core skills, right? Which kind of add to their core skills. So that is something that is becoming very, very important. And especially when the certifications are also moving more towards role based certifications and what you actually apply in your job, um, this becomes uh, very critical. So, um, you know, cross certification or certifying yourself on multiple areas, related areas, very critical today. So as an individual, we saw what are the benefits that we have. So we saw that there are a lot of benefits which help you improve and do your job better, which improve the kind of job opportunities you have, which improve the kind of role or positioning you can uh, demand for yourself in the project or in the organization. Um, and of course, this translates to a lot of tangible benefits like awards, rewards, increased salaries and so on. So uh, uh, for an individual, definitely um, certification brings a lot of uh, benefits. So let's look at it from a point of view of an organization and the IT decision makers or learning managers within an organization. And why should you pay more attention to training certifications today? So uh, there are a lot of challenges that are being faced by IT um, decision makers or leaders or learning managers for that matter within uh, an organization. And uh, like I said, one of the major challenges, of course, is the skill gap. Right? So and this has been um, predominantly uh, being created because of the technology churn that we've seen over the last decade. Technology is evolving so fast. Um, new opportunities of projects in the newer emerging technologies are um, appearing so fast that um, learning uh, teams, uh, LND teams are finding it difficult to keep up with the training training pace. You know, um, to meet these uh, new skills and to ensure that their workforce has the um, new skills or talent that is required. Right? So um, the skill gap is one major, um, um, I would say, challenge that an IT leader today has. Um, and this is, of course, leading to um, hiring as well as retaining skilled and talented professionals. That is becoming difficult because supply is less, demand is up more. Right, so um, you know, ensuring that you have the right people, ensuring you have the right people with the right skills, and then being able to uh, justify the kind of pay packets for them is also becoming difficult. Because of the low supply, the workload is also increasing on the few people who have the skills that are needed by the new projects or new assignments that are coming in. Right? So skills are uh, skilled people are less, but assignments are increasing. So naturally the workload on individuals is also increasing and that itself is also leading to a lot of grievances. Right, and this major being of course the loss of quality deliverables because you know uh, the amount of pressures are there on one individual who has the skills. Right, and um, of course uh, because of the short supply of skilled uh, people have naturally the uh, the uh, paid packets or the salaries expected are also higher, and that also leads to um, you know uh, a problem because generally you have certain budget restraints that are there within an organization. So definitely that um, is also kind of adding to the uh, um, 
challenges that are being faced by learning managers. So if you look at skill gaps over the last, you know, four or five years, definitely the skill gap has really, really increased a lot, right? Um, we have had a marginal reduction of 1% maybe over last year, but even today the skill gap remains at 78%, right? So 78% of IT managers uh, are reporting skill gaps, sorry. So, um, so there are organizations, 78% which are saying out of the, um, um, out of the 10,000 or so um, surveyed that 78% feel that there were skill gaps, right? Which is, which is a lot. Now, why are these skill gaps there, right? What are the reasons for this? skills gaps right and there are various reasons like i said uh, the rate of technology change um, is exceeding the skill development right so people organizations are not able to keep up with the pace of change of technology right and that is one of the major reasons for the skill gap and that is also one of the major reasons why organizations need to focus more on training certifications today right? because this skill gap is there and this is the reason why the skill gap is there it becomes imperative that they focus on training and certifications more today so it's um, difficult to attract the right uh, candidate um, with the right skills Of course, pay packets are higher because uh, low dim low supply that is there. And um, a lot of the current training programs that organizations have, skilling programs that the organization have, or skilling solutions that the organizations have are difficult for um, you know, um, are not enough for uh, bridging this skill gap. So uh, either organizations are ill-equipped to train or build uh, skills in those new emerging areas, right? Or um, the, the scale at which they need to do it, they don't have that kind of scale, right? So that is also falling short. I'm sorry, uh, just got disconnected for a minute. I hope it's visible now, the presentation. Yeah. So then uh, the organizations and learning managers or l and teams also need to think about the new methods of training or, or skilling their teams, right? And we'll come to what is becoming more and more popular today. Value of training um, is something that uh, so our organizations trying to bridge these skill gaps, right? Of course, the most obvious uh, solutions are train the existing people. So use uh, train your existing workforce, the resources that you have or the newer areas that are there. Second is maybe, you know, um, contract or hire uh, or newer uh, uh, people with the right skills, maybe temporarily on contract or uh, take them on board uh, additional people with the right skills.
Yeah, there seems to be some network uh, issue. I'm very sorry. Hope I'm audible again. So um, L&D teams and IT decision makers and organizations are seeing the value of training, right? So there is a lot of increase in formal training being provided to their um, uh, people. Uh, Reskilling is becoming very, very critical, especially when you have a huge workforce which has um, skills on legacy technologies, but the demand uh, or the kind of projects that an organization is getting is on the newer emerging technologies. Naturally, one of the solutions is reskilling. That also becomes a way of kind of uh, motivating their existing teams to try and uh, um, build uh, their careers uh, better in today's scenario by building new skills. Right? And what is um, becoming, um, and of course, uh, reskilling, um, there is a lot of uh, investment that is going to be required. Hiring new people, of course, because the supply is less, is a costly uh, proposition because, like I said, demand is more, supply is less. So another solution that um, today is taking um, root in um, IT organizations is what we look at skilling So as I was saying, um, what is taking um, uh, root in a lot of um, as a solution for a lot of organizations, and this is something that even we have been taking to our customers and to the market for the last two years, is what we call as the persona-based uh, skilling or onboarding, right? So uh, we are propagating to companies that they should hire new talent, young talent, fresh talent, and build the new emerging technology skills in those in that fresh talent. So the cost of acquiring that talent is not very high because you're not uh, you know hiring uh, um, uh, people who have a lot of experience, but at the same time you are ensuring that the skills that you're building in them right from the start are skills that are required in uh, at skills in these So for example, um, as uh, Rupesh must have shown in the beginning, we have a lot of onboarding uh, persona based solutions that we have taken to the market today. So we are, you know, taking fresh talent. Uh, so uh, when um, uh, companies are onboarding new fresh talents right from the uh, universities, uh, we are building programs for them, skilling programs for them to um, you know, um, make them into, let's say, cloud developers or 
um, cloud infrastructure specialist or uh, build a, a data scientist or build a, a AI developer, right? So we are actually taking fresh talent and trying to build these skills into that fresh talents. And it is showing a lot of benefits to organizations today. And we have done um, about four or five pilots with our customers and they have been extremely minute I think my teams is having some issues let me just uh, join back Everyone, please stay connected. Huh? Uh, there is some uh, tech internet issue, maybe at so it it will be uh, recovered soon. So please stay connected. Okay, so I've restarted my uh, teams, so hopefully this should not happen again. So value of training uh, definitely is um, uh, there for organizations. They are seeing the value of training and uh, they are um, open to new innovative ways of skilling um, uh, their uh, existing resources as well as, uh, you know, innovative ways of um, bridging that skill gap by maybe taking in new fresh resources and skilling them on new emerging technology areas. Of course, with, with that happening, right, how do you ensure that the right skills are built and how do you verify the skills? So a lot of, um, um, of IT decision makers are um, approving or author, um, uh, authorizing training um, provided that the end goal is certification. So certification is becoming and certification from the OEM of vendor, which is build that technology is becoming one way of um, Manish, will it be possible for you to share the presentation, please? Yes, madam. Yes. Yeah, please do that because I don't know. Teams is giving some issue on my end. Okay. Give me one minute. One. I'm extremely sorry for this, uh, everybody, but it's a technology glitch. <laughs> no. 
Yes, my screen is visible. Yes, yes, it's visible. I'm Thank on the right uh, slide, right, madam? Yes, you're on the right side. Oh, of course. Yeah, and of course, um, the um, the uh, um, survey which was done by the global, uh, which was done by Global Knowledge, uh, so Global Knowledge 2020 IT decision makers insights actually um, shows that 94% of the IT decision makers worldwide have uh, said that a certified team member adds more value. Right uh, and uh, justifies the cost of certification. So, so these are some of the ways of bridging those skill gaps that are there, ensuring more training, uh, more focused training, uh, uh, ensuring you build skills that are required for that specific role, and of course, um, ensuring that you validate those skills through certification. Um, Manish, you can go to the next slide. So the value of training and certification, where what is the benefits that you um, get uh, for uh, when you have a certified workforce, right? Uh, some uh, numbers over here. Um, economic uh, benefits. From certified uh, employees. And um, some um, other benefits that the organization gets. So you have an increase in productivity. Your skill gaps are reduced. Uh, meeting client requirements becomes much simpler, uh, much easier. Troubleshooting on the particular technology area becomes easier because you have skilled um, resources. Projects take lesser time to complete. It, uh, deployments are faster, quality of deployments is better. Right? So these are all benefits of ensuring you have a certified workforce. So what are the ways in which, as if I'm talking about increasing the focus on training and certification for an organization, um, and uh, uh, increasing the uh, certification that individuals should do, then what are the ways in which you ensure that you are equipped to uh, have the skills, to learn those skills, and to ensure that you uh, clear the certifications? So there are different methods for learning that we know of today. So um, Manish, if you can forward. Next slide. So we know that we have a formal learning method, right? And we have an informal learning method. So in the last um, about decade, the informal learning method has also gained a lot of momentum. There is a lot of acceptance of that, especially in the millennials today um, uh, who are you know, taking to this new method really well, uh, rather than the uh, people from the earlier generation. Right, so uh, this is becoming one uh, uh, method of learning that even organizations are adopting worldwide. Right, formal training, of course, is how we know the training for many years today, which is instructor-led training. Of course, today with the pandemic, it is more virtual instructor-led trainings, and even. <coughs> Even today, almost 67% of IT professionals still prefer the formal training over informal. Of course, um, while the informal learning methods are good for building knowledge, uh, if you need to build skills, especially implementation skills, especially architectural skills, design skills, then uh, it has been proven that instructor-led uh, uh, formal learning interventions are much better suited for those kind of skill building, right? So um, informal learning would be things like micro learning. Today we have a lot of uh, on um, online uh, training vendors who are providing us with uh, courses on different technology areas. 
these are self paced you can learn at your own uh, time on demand right um, and a lot of people are building knowledge and you know learning about new technology areas through this it's it's a really good way of uh, building knowledge but like i said for skill building yet um, your instructor led uh, or your um, formal learning is uh, proven to be a better uh, method but it doesn't have to be either or right today what is becoming um, more popular is a blended learning blended learning is of course a combination of formal learning and informal learning so you get the best of both worlds right um to to uh, reduce their learning costs a lot of organizations are ensuring that basic core knowledge is built using informal learning while the core implementation skills or design skills are built using formal learning so it's a combination of informal formal learning with a lot of mentoring a lot of uh, activities that um, are done which kind of ensure that you have a um, skill resource at the end of it right so this is uh, something that um, is becoming important and even from an individual's perspective um, if you want to gain more and more certifications then um, uh, it's not necessary that formal learning is the only way to do it you also have the option of informal learning where you can do the learning at your own time and then of course you have a lot of learning partners who provide you with blended solutions that can be used so the cost is also not uh, exorbitant at the same time the outcome or the result is what you want so having had a look at uh, spy certifications we saw why is it important today with some data points from an individual perspective as well as why uh, today organizations or decision makers or lnd teams within organizations need to focus more on training and certification and we've seen what a kind of benefits it brings the organization also right and then we looked at what are the ways or methods of learning that are there today and we've seen we have informal learning formal learning and we also have a combination of the two which is a blended learning model that is evolving today and becoming more and more popular today um so now let's have a look at um um specifically microsoft certifications and what are the different certification paths that are provided by microsoft and um, which certification is right for whom right so let's have a look at that so first of all um if you look at microsoft certifications today they have moved more towards what we call or what microsoft calls as role based certifications right and again this came out of um the uh, rapid change that technology was going through right and that skill gap that we spoke about right uh, this actually resulted in uh, microsoft coming up with role based certifications rather than technology based certifications which was what was the previous model that they had right so this they felt it is necessary in today's world with the way technology is churning or the way it is changing that the certification be based more on the role an individual needs to perform and the skills required for performing that role so the training and certification has gone beyond individual technologies and the focus has gone more to a specific job um, and the skills that are required for doing those specific jobs and that's how we have role based certifications today in microsoft so what microsoft does to arrive at uh, these different uh, role based certifications um if you can go to the next slide money they actually do what is known as a job task analysis right J JTA is what they call it, where um, they identify for so it's a it's a process that they go through where they identify what are the different job roles in the industry today. There are a lot of subject matter experts within Microsoft and external to Microsoft who participate. 
there's a lot of ma market research uh, that happens for what are the skills that are required for these job roles. So SMEs as well as market research define what are the skills that are required for doing those job roles. Right. So output of this job task analysis is basically the list of skills. And what are the um, knowledge that technology knowledge that an individual must have or any individual who is in that specific job role? Right. So Manish, if you can go next. And then of course, um, uh, to build these skills or to ensure this um, skills are acquired by that person, there are many training interventions that are there. And then of course, to validate the skills, you have assessment, right? So from a training perspective, uh, Microsoft themselves have their own micro learning site. So Microsoft has uh, Microsoft Learn uh, today, which has a lot of content which is free which is uh, mapped to role based certifications and it is uh, completely self paced um, on demand learning that you have. Of course, they also continue to have their uh, instructor led training programs which are specific to a particular role based um, certification today. Um, uh, there are a lot of books that they publish. Um, and then of course they have exams that are related to that certification which uh, kind of assess whether the individual has gained that knowledge and skills required for that role. So if you look at the certification portfolio that Microsoft has. Right, the uh, Microsoft certifications are divided into three categories. So Manish, if you can. So we have fundamental certification. We have uh, advanced role based certifications and then we have speciality certifications. Okay? Fundamental uh, certifications are to build the basic skills, right? Absolute basic skills that are required for that uh, uh, technology. So, uh, even for organizations today, what is becoming important is um, an awareness of. Uh, some of the fundamental uh, technology areas, right? So awareness about uh, cloud and what is cloud all about? Awareness about uh, maybe um, artificial intelligence and what it is all about. Awareness about the data solutions that are there and what are the choices you have. So a lot of basic uh, knowledge is something that needs to be there within organizations, within the talent pool of organizations. But this um, is uh, the core basic knowledge which they want their mass um, uh, skilling that needs to be done, right? So maybe across the organization, this is the basic core skills that any person should have. Then based on the role a person is playing, the role uh, the person can um, you know, get more into the skills or technology areas required to do that role. So advanced role based trainings then will cover multiple technology areas more in depth uh, to enable that person to build the knowledge and skills required to do that role. And the third type, which is speciality, is where you have deep dive, uh, where you build deep dive skills in a, a specific niche area of solution of maybe an industry solution um, like maybe IoT or uh, you know maybe a virtualization virtual desktop. So very very SAP very very specific uh, niche area that you want to build deep skills on. So specialty certifications are targeted at that. So let's look at what are the um, different certifications that are there in these three categories. So the first we have is under fundamentals. So there are currently three uh, fundamental exams that Microsoft provides. You have uh, Azure fundamentals, you have Azure data fundamentals, and you have Azure AI fundamentals. Okay? Uh, these um, all have the related exams. So you have AZ 900 for Azure fundamentals, DP 900 for data fundamentals, AI 900 for uh, AI fundamentals. So these are core um, 
uh, basic knowledge about that technology space, right? So Azure Fundamentals, for example, is uh, is covers the breadth of um, Azure Cloud from Microsoft, but at a very, very, very high level, so that you understand what the cloud capabilities are, you understand uh, how you work with the cloud and so on. Similarly, data fundamentals is more about um, the basics of uh, data and data management. And AI fundamentals is all about uh, um, the basics of artificial intelligence and machine learning related areas. Then coming to advanced role-based technologies, uh, role-based certifications, we have many. Now over here we have two levels of certifications that are there. We have uh, associate level as well as we have expert level. So in associate level, we have different uh, uh, certifications like as your administrator, as your developer, security engineer, database administrator, data engineer, right? Um, data scientist, AI engineer, and data analyst. So these are different uh, roles that all uh, individuals could be playing uh, within an organization. And you see the associated exams that you need to give to achieve that certification. The advanced, uh, um, that is the expert level certifications that are there, like Azure Solutions Architect, that requires um, you to uh, typically have more skills or are more deep dive in a particular area. Like Azure Solutions Architect is about building solutions and designing solutions on Azure. Now this actually maps to two exams, 303 and 304. DevOps engineer is specific building deep dive skills on um, DevOps related technology areas. And that is again an expert level uh, certification that is there. So typically Microsoft will have a fundamental uh, certification. So normally if you look at a certification path that a person will take, you will do a fundamental exam, then you will do an associate exam, and then typically you will go for an expert level exam. Right? So um, today, none of the fundamentals are mandatory in Azure, uh, Microsoft Azure certification path. Uh, they are optional. Um, uh, they are meant more for organizations to ensure that basically. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Sachi, this side. Yeah. Can you share the graph of uh, Azure certification? When you say graph, what do you mean by graph? Yes, the certification path of uh, like uh, Azure Fundamental 2 or Azure Expert, uh, Solution Architect Expert. So can you share the uh, any document or graph, uh, the certification level? Yes, I will, I will share in the end. Uh, where you can find more information on this. OK, thank you. I'll also be going into each and every um, exam and looking at some of these skills that are being measured in these exams. Uh, yes, because I have done AJ 900, I have done the AJ 104, uh, AJ 500, AJ 104, but uh, now I'm planning out to AJ 303 and 304. That's right. That would be the right path. So like I said, Typically, path is going from fundamentals to an associate level exam based on the role you're playing and then to an expert level exam. OK, understand. So in your case, you're go, going to the right path because you've already done AZ 900, which is a fundamental level exam. Then you've done associate level role based skills like you've done as your administrator. And what is very, very important and uh, very good in your case is you have also cross certified. So you've done as your administrator and you've also done security engineer. Uh, yes, I have done as your security associate and security expert also. Because I'm yeah. already using Office 65, so I have complete MS 100, MS 101. Also. So that is that is a very good uh, thing you've done because cross certification is becoming, becoming very critical today in today's scenario. So security especially. Having a security certification along with any other role-based certification is uh, very critical. 
right and then uh, now the next path that oh, you're looking true. at is an expert which is architect level uh, exam which is ideally the right path that you're taking uh, yeah because my plan is that in uh, this month is already over in uh, april i have to complete uh, 304 and 3043 uh, as a azure uh, solution architect excellent that's the right path then you're on the right path So Thanks. currently, you are working on infrastructure solutions. Ah uh, yes, because I am working in the Aspire InfoLab Private Limited. It's an IT company, IT consulting company, okay. and uh, I am working this company last uh, eight years. And now sure. I am looking the my career path in cloud only, cloud and That's security. Okay. So apart from that, I have uh, done the certification in uh, uh, CCSP and CISM from Bing Cert. Oh, great, and that is an excellent. Uh, Thing that is there. So let's discuss this more in the Q and A section. Sorry. We'll discuss this more in the Q and A section at the end. Okay. In the question and answer section, in the end of the core uh, program, in the end of this session, we'll we'll discuss this more. Yeah. Hello. Okay, uh, let's have a look at. Let's have a look at these specialty certifications. So, Manish, if you can. So, you'll see that currently Microsoft has three specialty certifications. We have IoT developer, we have uh, SAP workloads on Azure, and we have Windows Virtual Desktop. These are core, deep dive, very niche areas on Azure uh, where you can build skills. So let's quickly go through some of these certifications, right? And like uh, um, Rupesh said, we will be sharing the presentation, um, um, the video, so you can always go through it at later stage also. So in the fundamental yeah, Shani, certification. Uh, hello. Yes. Yes. Yeah, sorry to interrupt you. This is Ranga. So. You showed uh, the certification path for the technical uh, way, right? So I just want to understand if you have a certification for a path for the business uh, related focus and also for the managerial roles uh, for the project managers and the other thing. So because I'm basically looking out for some certification path on the cloud for Azure. Uh, so if you can also show that you already have that in your slide or is it a separate path? So these are more from uh, Azure technical uh, certifications point of view. So uh, okay. when you when you look at uh, from a uh, um, project management perspective and architecting perspective, three zero three three zero four are the right uh, uh, exams for that. Okay, but is there anything uh, specific to the uh, the business related uh, things on the Azure part? So yes, uh, uh, it's not actually part of Azure um, uh, certification. So Microsoft also has their own business cloud, which is the Dynamics 365 cloud, and there are a lot of uh, certifications related to Dynamics. Okay, so will is, you be able to guide that path uh, in the in this session, or how is that? Sure. So at the end of the session, I can show you where you can get more information on that. Okay. You can also connect to us later, and we can also give you more information on that. Okay. Okay. Fine. Thank you. So let's quickly look at uh, fundamentals um, certifications and what are they. So if you're new to cloud, right, and um, you're just starting your journey with the cloud, ideally you should take the AZ-900 certification, right, which is the Microsoft Azure Fundamentals exam. This, you know, builds the basic cloud concepts. It gives you some information about the uh, different kind of services that are there on Azure cloud. And it also, uh, you know, brings or touches upon some of the important concepts of cloud solutions like security, privacy, compliance, trust, pricing, SLAs. Right? These are important aspects for any cloud solution. So, um, what are the basics of clouds? What are the services that Azure provides? And from a solutioning perspective, what are the other 
things which are important related to cloud. The AZ900 covers the entire spectrum at a very high level. So this is an ideal exam if you want to build some very basic core skills on Azure. Now you have uh, training um, also uh, training courses also related to this exam. So you have a one day course uh, which is more like a, a, a demo course with no hands on. But if you want to really kind of dirty your hands on some of those areas and technologies, you also have a two day program that you can do. There is a good learning path and I will share the uh, uh, URL of the learning paths on uh, Microsoft Learn. So you can always go and uh, you know, uh, look at the Azure Fundamentals learning path on Microsoft Learn and um, do the self-paced uh, learning also. Similarly, we have um, data fundamentals, which basically um, cover the core data concepts, right? And um, cover what are the different types of data solutions that you can have on the cloud today, whether it's relational database or whether it's non-relational uh, data solutions or whether it is analytical data solutions. So again, if you are new to cloud and if you want to work on uh, data related Concept, this is ideal for you, right? Again, this is a fundamental exam, so it does not go deep dive into anything, but it gives you a good idea about what is relational data. So if you want to, uh, if you want to create a kind of a, um, a basic level of uh, knowledge in your entire organization on data, um, data related technologies, this is a ideal course for that an ideal certification for that. Similarly, AI today being so much in demand, right? AI is one of the most popular uh, emerging technology areas that we have. So understanding what is AI all about, right? And basic concepts of AI, right? What are the different kinds of workloads uh, that you have on AI? What are the, um, um, you know, what is machine learning all about? What is cognitive services all about? What are the different kind of, uh, you know, uh, services that you have on Azure, right? So if you want to learn more about these, whether it is deep learning solutions like NLP, whether it is machine learning and what it is all about, whether it is bot services and what it is all about, the core basics are covered in AI 900, right? This is uh, um, exam which does not does not cover any kind of hands on, so it does not it does not uh, cover any kind of implementation skills. Uh, it just covers the basic uh, uh, knowledge, core simple basic knowledge about some of these areas. Okay. Then going to the next advanced role based certifications. So the first advanced role-based certification is AZ-104, which is meant for IT administrators, right? Today, if you look at any IT administrator, uh, every organization in some way is trying out the cloud. And more or less, a lot of organizations are moving their workloads to the cloud. So definitely, IT administrator's role is going to change to become a cloud administrator. And if you need to build skills as a cloud administrator, this is the ideal course for you, right? So it covers very important basic concepts that are needed for any administrator, whether it's related to storage, compute, networking, uh, monitoring, troubleshooting, governance, right? All these, and of course, security and identity. So these are the core concepts that are covered in this exam. So um, if you want to implement and manage and monitor workloads on Azure, this is the ideal course for you. This is an associate level exam. And like I said, it's not mandatory to have given a fundamental exam before you give this exam. Associate level exam, it's not mandatory, but um, it's good if you can do that. Okay. The next is, um, of course, an Azure developer. Um, so if you want to become a cloud developer, you um, want 
to start building cloud native applications you want to build applications which are modern applications which use some of the um, you know technologies like uh, uh, containerization and different deployment patterns that have been used right this is the right uh, solution for you uh, this is the right uh, certification for you right so how do you um, um create cloud native applications or build or develop cloud native applications how do you work with different uh, compute solutions security um, optimize your uh, applications how do you connect to other applications and consume those services all these are aspects that are being covered in um, az204 which is for azure developer Of course, the next one, which is Azure Security Engineer, like I said, is critical because um, uh, this is, I think, an exam that everybody should give. Right? Whatever your other role is, whether you are an administrator, a developer, an um, architect, Azure uh, Security Engineer uh, is an associate level exam that you must give. In fact, Microsoft is also building an entire series of exams for security. itself also so we will soon see more exams that are appearing in this space today we also have ms500 which is another exam uh, which is more an expert level exam which is uh, covers not only the azure cloud but also the office 365 cloud because security today and the core security solution on azure or in the microsoft cloud today which is uh, azure active directory spans across multiple technology areas okay? so um we we will see more course more uh, certifications in security space um soon and that, but i think this particular associate level exam is a must for everybody whatever role you are playing so this covers mainly um you know the identity access solutions what is the responsibility matrix uh, in the cloud who is responsible is the vendor responsible is the customer responsible all this is what is covered in easy uh, the next of course uh, so these are the core um, azure associate exams which are related to roles which are in apps and infra right so if you look at apps and infra it covers basically infrastructure solutions application development uh, and so on then there are a lot of data related uh, certifications that are there in azure uh, in the data and ai space so let's have a look at these. so one of the first over here is of course dp300 which is a certification that they just introduced last year which is about uh, database administrator so again this is administrator level exam but it is specific to database administrator so what is the role of database administrator will play on the cloud and what does what are the skills that the database administrator require this is related to azure it is more um, uh, uh, specific to the data services on azure right so whether it is um, uh, and this is mainly specific to relational data services on azure so it talks about sql solutions on azure so whether it is sql server on a virtual machine whether it is the uh, sql database as a service that is provided on azure how do you optimize how do you monitor how do you take care of viability disaster recovery right all this is what is covered as part of this exam right um if you are doing any kind of a data uh, certification path i would suggest dp300 is something that you need to do the next associate exam is dp203 which is microsoft azure data engineer and data engineer is an important role today especially with analytics workloads that uh, are being driven on uh, any cloud so um the role of uh, you know ingestion of data from different sources building the data pipelines 
um, for transforming the data, for um, pushing the data to uh, data stores, uh, processing of the data, um, visualization of the data, monitoring these data pipelines that are being created. All these are important aspects that data engineers need to work work with and dp203 is an exam which addresses those in fact this is yet in beta earlier we had two exams which uh, uh, which uh, basically provided you had to pass two exams to become a azure data engineer you had dp200 and dp201 so one was more related to the technologies so it used to cover what are the different techno data technologies on azure and the second was more related to designing of data solutions. Right? So what they have done now is they've combined both these together and they have created only one exam, which is DP203, which gives you the certification of Azure Data Engineer. Um, um, so this covers both design and implementation aspects um, of um, designing data solutions of Azure. This is, like I said, still in beta. Um, the earlier exam um, is retiring now, and this will take effect uh, uh, from April onwards. Um, another um, exam, which is um, a specific, uh, again, associate level exam is DP100, which is for building data scientists. Right? So today we have a lot of um, uh, machine learning solutions on Azure. So this uh, certification is more about how do you build uh, machine learning models? How do you build, test, deploy, and operationalize um, uh, machine learning models on Azure? And what are the different services related to that? So training models, optimizing, managing models, versioning of models, deploying and consuming those models from applications. These are what are basically the skills that are um, covered in this uh, exam. Okay? So if you're a data scientist, ideally you should look at doing uh, DP203 plus DP100. And then we have data analyst uh, exam, which is more from the point of view of uh, visualization of the analytics that you would have done using one of the processing applications. So uh, whether it is um, uh, creating dashboards, creating reports, uh, publishing those reports, sharing those reports, how do you do it using Power BI? So this is a um, certification related to Power BI as a technology in Azure. And today Power BI is becoming the de facto visualization tool for any solution on Azure, whether it is, um, uh, you know, a monitor monitoring solution, whether it is an analytic solution, um, any kind of solution, ultimately you're going to build dashboards, you're going to build reports using DA100. So if you want to um, kind of just uh, understand data solutions and uh, be able to build a uh, dashboard reporting on uh, the data that is there on um, your Azure cloud, then DP300 and DA100 are the exams that um, uh, you need to look at along with DP203. And then, of course, in the data and AI space, you have AI102. Actually, again, this is a new exam. It's in beta. The earlier exam was AI100, which was uh, the exam for Azure AI engineer. They have enhanced it a bit um, uh, to cover uh, a little more area. So this is about uh, an AI developer, right? How do you build uh, AI solutions? How do you consume data? Um, um machine learning models how do you build intelligent applications all this is being covered in this exam so whether it is the list of cognitive services that are provided by azure how do you use those cognitive uh, services which are related to vision language knowledge how do you build intelligent applications like chatbot applications right all this is covered in microsoft azure ai engineer 
they're coming to the expert level uh, certifications, which is a uh, solution architect and um, DevOps engineer. Now, solution architect, like I said, ha um, has two aspects. One, if you have to be an architect, you need to have basic knowledge about the technologies using which you're going to architect the solution. So whether it is, uh, you know, compute, storage, data um, solutions, right? you need to be aware of those solutions before you can build an architecture or a solution. So one aspect is understanding the technology areas which are being covered in AZ-303. And the other aspect is the actual designing. So how do you design for uh, um, uh, business continuity, how do you design for resiliency, how do you design for viability, right? How do you design um, for security? How do you design monitoring of solutions that you're deploying? So all this is part of AZ-304. So you need to give both of these to become a solution architect. Now this being an expert level uh, certification, what is generally recommended is that you also do some associate uh, certification also. So ideally, if you um, look at the uh, solution architect, then ideally you should either do as your administrator and or as your developer before you come into as your solution architect. It's not mandatory, but it's recommended you do that. AC400 is a DevOps engineer. Now this has a mandatory prerequisite. You have to have cleared either as your administrator or as your developer exam. That is either AZ104 or AZ204 before you can attempt AZ400 and get the certification of DevOps engineer. Right? So DevOps engineer is all about um, you know, uh, building your CI CD solutions, um, um, building your um, DevOps strategy, right? How do you monitor that DevOps strategy? All that is basically covered in the Azure DevOps engineer. So these are some of the core role based certifications, whether it's associate level or whether it's um, advanced. Um, that is export level certifications. Now coming to some specialty certifications, which are like I said are very very niche solution area specific certifications. So for example, if you want to build IoT solutions on Azure today, right? It's a very niche um, technology solution area. Or application solution area, um, you have a certification which is specific to that called Microsoft IoT Developer, and the exam you need to pass is AZ220, right? So if you want to um, build uh, infrastructure solutions using IoT, manage devices, um, implement edge technologies, right? Process the data that is being generated by the devices, build a uh, uh, your uh, analytics uh, dashboards using that, all that is covered within this exam. Um, SAP is again one workload which is um, uh, you know, being uh, migrated a lot to Azure today. So there are a lot of organizations who are having SAP uh, solutions who are migrating to Azure. So you require certain skills in SAP, of course, and then of course you require the skills in Azure infrastructure to be able to know how to manage the SAP workloads on, as when they are running on the Azure infrastructure. So this is a program that is created, um, which is a combination of both SAP knowledge as well as Azure infrastructure knowledge to ensure that you can manage uh, deploy um, um, and manage solutions for SAP workloads on Azure. So it's again a very niche
हेलो अशीम मैम यस यू आर नॉट ऑडियोबल इन इन यस मनीष ओके नो ऑडिबल यस यस नाउ यस सो मनीष यू कैन गो टू सर्टिफिकेशंस एट अ ग्लांस द नेक्स्ट स्लाइड मनीष So if I have to um, show you this at a glance, the different certification areas are there. Let me just share this. Is this visible? Are you able to see uh, my screen? Yes, yes, madam. So you can see there are three areas that we have on the cloud. One is managed hybrid. I'm sorry to interrupt, Manish. I think Ashwini is on mute. Oh no, are you? Yes, yeah. Y yes, yes. Uh, hello, Ashwini, ma'am. I'm calling her one second. So Manish is just sharing the screen. Yeah. So as you can see, there are different uh, spaces that we are looking at. One is hybrid infrastructure, managing that in the cloud, um, building data and analytic solutions in the cloud, and of course, innovating um, um, applications on the cloud. Okay. And you can see the different. the uh, certification areas and roles and how they um, um basically fall in these different spaces so for example if you look at the solution architect um, um, or the azure fundamentals it's in the intersection of all three because it covers all the services that are there on azure right so fundamentals covers it at a very high level um uh, a solution architect Uh, uh, covers it at a more deeper level because you are actually have to know the services to be able to build the solutions. Similarly, you have um, the data and uh, you know innovative applications intersection. You will see a lot of your AI related um, certifications fall under that space. If you can. scroll down manish okay. 
So I'll just share the link um, on the chat. So if you can come back to the presentation, Manish. So once I had a look at the different certifications and um, understood the different certifications and who should give which one. Once you give a certification, how long is it valid? That's an important uh, question. Now what is happening today is because the way the technology is changing, for example, even on Azure, if I'm an Azure administrator and I give the Azure administrator exam today, within a few months time, there would be new services or solutions related to Azure administration that would be available to me. Because the cloud is evolving, because technology is evolving so fast. So the skills that I would have learned today may actually um, may not be as relevant a few months down the line, or maybe I will have to enhance those skills by learning some new technology uh, solutions a few months down the line, right? And Microsoft realized this um, problem, right? So, um, Manish, can you share the presentation again? Yes, madam. Am I audible? Yes, yes, you are audible. I am already shared my presentation. Just now. So all role based. Um, and specialty certifications are valid only for one year now, starting June 21st. So Microsoft is ensuring that any rule based uh, certification you uh, undertake and you give is going to be valid only for a year. So after a year, that certification is going to become invalid. So you'll have to recertify yourself. Hello, Ashwini ma'am, you are on mute, madam. Hello. So, so every uh, certification, role-based or specialty certification that we have today, 
is going to be like i said invalidated after a year and you will need to renew it now like i said it's not easy to provide or to give the certification it does cost quite a lot so what microsoft has also done is they've made it easy to renew your certification so you don't need to give the um, or retake the exam again there is no cost for renewal now you can renew by passing a free renewal assessment which is there on their um, on their micro learning platform which is microsoft learn right so you can go to microsoft learn and you can uh, six months before your certification expires from six months before your certification expires you can simply give the assessment right the assessment will test your knowledge on some of the new areas and um, you can simply renew your certificate for one more year right so in fact um, you know maintaining the certifications once you have given the exam and acquired it this also become simpler now with microsoft certifications so you can um, some of the resources for certification so you can go to microsoft.com/learn you will see a lot of um, uh, learning paths over here related to certifications you also have individual um, um, courses that are there specific to technology areas so microsoft.com slash learn has become the um, micro learning site of my uh hello guys uh, sorry for inconvenience uh some technical issue from uh, ashini ma'am side uh, so please uh, hold wait for the moment well today because of the pandemic it's becoming um, um difficult to go to exam center and give exams so microsoft exams are typically given to a pearson view exam center pearson view is the certification partner for microsoft but uh, microsoft has made it easy um, you can also give your exam online from the comfort of your home or your office uh there are just a few uh, things you need to ensure when you're doing it from your home or office uh, that is uh, you ha have a room with no disturbances no books or any kind of writing material close to you and nobody should be um, in that room with you when you're giving the exam right there are certain system uh, requirements that you need to ensure you have like you should have a web web camera or uh, you should have uh, uh, your um, a uh, mic uh, uh, which is working and that uh, is uh, one of the few 
for some of the few uh, prerequisites that you need. So Manish, if you can go to the next uh, slide. Manish, can you go to the next yes. slide, please? Yes, yes. That is Q&A session, right? Hello, Ashwini ma'am. Hello. Uh, can you hear me, guys? Yes, yes, you sir. Can. yes sir. Okay. Yes, Ashwini ma'am, are you there? Oh, she, she have some in, internet connectivity issue, I think. Yes, yes. Yeah, uh, Manish, if you can just go to the slide before this. Yes. So like I said, you can very easily schedule an exam, uh, which is an uh, online proctored exam. Right, and there are some uh, basic uh, um, system requirements that you need. So you need to have a working web camera and a mic. And then, of course, you need to ensure that you don't have any kind of uh, uh, firewall rules that are restricting uh, access to the sites. And you should be able to give it. So there are, in fact, the increase in um, exam, uh, you know, uh, people giving examination has also increased because and during the pandemic, people have were at home for having a lot of time and online exam has become very easy uh, to give now. So if you have put a um, link where you can get more information about how you can give your exam online, it's very simple, very easy to do. I have myself given about four or five certifications online in the last one year, and it has been absolutely uh, very smooth uh, doing so. So that brings us to the end of the session and uh, coming to uh, question and answer. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me and um, I'll also try and get you information on the business solutions, business certifications. Guys, anyone will be having questions, kindly please ask it to ma'am. Or we can uh, move ahead then. Anybody's having question? Hello? Yeah, hi, uh, this is Rajesh. J just a moment. So ma'am ma is, uh, I guess she is disconnected. So let, okay. let her uh, connect back and then you can start asking questions. Huh? Yeah, I'll put my question in the chat window. I think that will be better. Yeah, that will do. Yeah, that will even do. So, guys, um, like Rajesh said, you can uh, drop your questions in the chat box. Meanwhile, ma'am will uh, connecting back. So, she will be answering then. Please feel free to uh, write your questions. <laughs> So, Rajesh, to answer your question, there are multiple um, um, of resources for preparing for the exam. So, like I said, there are learning partners like Synergetics who also who conduct ILT uh, programs, uh, instructor-led uh, training programs for certifications. So, you can attend one of those training programs for the specific certification you want to give. As part of the training, you also get uh, some course material, which is official Microsoft course material and you get an exam voucher uh, using which you can attempt an exam. 
um, other than instructor led uh, training programs, uh, there are a lot of uh, learning paths for different solutions for different certifications on Microsoft Learn. So if you Google for a particular certification, for example, uh, at uh, if you go to the Microsoft page for that. If you go for the Microsoft page for that certification, at the bottom you will see a lot of uh, Microsoft Learn links for the different modules on Microsoft Learn. So you can uh, go to those uh, links and uh, attend those. Uh, those are self-learning modules. Um, uh, of course, over there you will have some hands-on that is provided as part of that online uh, learning. But if you really want to do you know, full fledged labs and you want to like, you know, have a better understanding of attending an uh, virtual ILT program um, from one of the partners like Synergetics would be the right way of doing it. As far as um, sample questions are concerned, um, uh, though there are a lot of unofficial dumps that are there, uh, I don't think today we have any uh, uh, sample questions which are free. Most of them are paid. Uh, questions, right? If you attend a virtual IELTS in the material that you get, you have some assessments at the end of each module, so you can always uh, do that. I hope that answers your question, Rajesh. Yes, Ashwini, thanks a lot. We periodically also cover a few um, uh, exam prep sessions. So exam prep sessions is again more about, you know, which are the modules which are important. What are the kind of questions you will get? Uh, what are the uh, focus uh, uh, modules that you should focus on? Some sample questions or type of questions is what is covered generally in an exam prep session. So um, for project managers, especially if you're managing um, um, Azure or cloud projects, I think AZ-900 fundamentals would be the I Amit, mean, to answer your question, um, should you do AI 100 or AI 900 first? If you're absolutely new to um, artificial intelligence, you don't have any kind of um, you know, academic background on it, then I would suggest you do AI 900 first and then go for AI 100. So AI 900 is a fundamental exam which covers some of the basic concepts related to AI. What are the different kind of uh, services? What are the different kind of solutions? And then AI 100 goes deep into development of AI solutions. I hope I was audible. Um, uh, Bhaskar, for every exam voucher that you have, um, uh, you have uh, one attempt. Unless you, the exam voucher that you've bought is with a retake uh, option. So there are exam vouchers that you can buy which have a single or uh, multiple retake options where the second attempt or third attempt could be free uh, in case you don't clear the first attempt. But naturally those exam vouchers will be uh, costing more than a single attempt voucher.
Thanks. If you are new to cloud, Amit, uh, then uh, before AI fundamentals, you should ideally do AZ fundamental, uh, Azure fundamentals, which is AZ 900. So six months before your uh, certification is expiring, uh, you get the option opening up for renewal. So it's not that you have to do it six months before. So Rajan, six months before your uh, certification is expiring, the option for taking a renewal assessment will open up. So you can take it up to that time. Your uh, certification uh, uh, does not get uh, expired. I hope Rajan that answers your question. Uh, none of the fundamental uh, exams um, uh, are mandatory, uh, Bhaskar. Um, so these all fundamental exams are optional, but if you are completely new uh, to the cloud, it is always good to go through the fundamental. But it is not for it's not mandatory for doing AZ 303. You can directly appear for AZ 303. So the, I'm just repasting the link. This link gives you details of all the Microsoft uh, examinations. Microsoft certifications in different uh, roles also. So uh, if you want, um, whether it's not just Azure, but even in uh, your um, Power Platform or Dynamics, uh, that is your business applications, um, you can see these certifications from this link. So it shows you which are the fundamental exams. It shows you which are the um, role based exams and which are the speciality exams. Oh yes, there are um, a lot. Most of the other cloud vendors also provide some certification uh, in uh, either data or AI. But none of the vendors have as wide a certification or portfolio as Microsoft does. So Microsoft has a very specific role based certifications which are not there in uh, provided by other vendors. So they may have some generic, uh, you know, database. Uh, um, Certification, but no specific role based certifications. And Rajesh, yes, Microsoft certifications today in the market has a lot of demand.
So there are no more questions. Uh, thank you, everybody, for being part of this uh, webinar. And um, I urge all of you all to um, understand the benefits of certifications and get yourself certified on the uh, right skills um, that are suited for your role. Uh, in Microsoft, there are a lot of options you have specific to the role that you're playing in the organization, and it will definitely add value to your uh, uh, to your uh, profile. Especially um, in international markets, uh, certification hold a lot of weightage, um, so certified resources are definitely uh, much higher paid. So thank you so much once more. And uh, if there are any questions, uh, please do uh, feel free to put them up on the chat. Thanks, Ashwini, for the wonderful session. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Ashwini, ma'am, uh, for this session, uh, for this wonderful session uh, on uh, my masterclass on right certification for your resources search ahead with productivity levels also thank you everyone uh, for joining today's webinar so on the screen you can see uh, the trainings uh, currently available uh, currently synergetics is providing so uh, we uh, we always release a monthly training calendar okay on based on that uh, we provide the trainings so anyone is interested uh, to get the details about it you can uh, just WhatsApp me or call me. I've already shared my number. If you want, I'll just uh, reshare it for you. We have also shared the uh, training link. OK, the trainings which are available. We have already shared the link uh, from our website. So you can visit us there. And for more details, again, you can contact me. Uh, as uh, one special announcement I want to make. Uh, so based on today's um, questions that you have asked, and uh, the feedback forms that you will be submitting based on that we are going to select five lucky winners and to whom we are going to give the uh, microsoft sponsored ex five exam vouchers so five lucky winners are going to win it so uh, first of all don't miss to submit your valuable feedback to us and uh, then we will be announcing the winners later on we'll be directly contacting you over mail so <clears throat> to get the recordings of these sessions uh, do follow our YouTube channel. Uh, after the session, we will be uploading all the uh, webinar recordings on the channel. So do follow us. We have already shared the link in the chat box. For your reference, I'll be sharing it again. So thank you so much, everyone. Have a great weekend. Thank you so much, Ashwin, ma'am, for the great session. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.